Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello. If you're returning, welcome back. Thank you so much for sticking around. I really appreciate you. Today's video, we are visiting, or we are revisiting an old pal, uh, Marissa Matthews. And for those of you who don't know, Marissa Matthews is a pretty popular fat activist over on the TikTok who started making content back at around like 2020-ish, I think. Actually, I think like my second reaction video I ever did on my channel was to her and her content. And and it's actually like still performing pretty well even though it's like older in the grand scheme of the internet because it's like a year old and in that video i did like a very full beat so i figured i would emulate the same energy here <laughs> i think marissa is an interesting um person and creator because if you look at her content and like don't really know what like the fat activism movement is all about i think it's pretty like easy to say that like her way of communicating her cause uh, is very counterproductive to that cause. <laughs> because the way that she comes off on her platform is like extremely condescending, whiny, and like quite frankly, just very rude. I think it would just like shut like the everyday person off of her content because it's just, I don't know, you'll see what I'm talking about, but I'll have my original video linked down below as well if you wanna go check that out. So Marissa took a hiatus from the internet uh, and is now coming back to making content again as of like September of this year. And honestly, I thought that she had just blocked me so I couldn't see her content anymore, but it turns out that she just left the internet uh, just as a whole. So today I thought it would be fun to look at some of her new content and see if, if she's changed after her, or after her hiatus. And yeah, so let's just get into it. So first off, I was curious to see why she decided to take this hiatus. And when I was sorting through the myriad of um, tube girl trend videos that she has done, uh, I uh, found this caption of one that said, some of the reasons why I haven't been posting. One, the bullying. The bullying and harassment broke me down so much that I was hating my life daily because of it. I had to heal my mental health from all the harm the bullying caused. I had a lot of personal things happening, my move, loss of friends, etc., that I was more focused on dealing with. I fell out of love with making content and videos and such. I was in a creative slash motivation rut, I guess you could say. And five, I fell out of my reason slash purpose on here. There are a few other reasons that are explained on my other platforms. If you'd like more details, thanks for still being here. So I, like any other human with a heart, uh, obviously like don't like hearing that Marissa essentially got bullied off the internet for a while. As someone who also has a social media platform, I can absolutely understand how vile certain con comments can be. I have gotten very good at like filtering them out. Sometimes there are just ones that still really like get me. <laughs> And so I I understand um, but we're actually gonna talk about like this whole concept a little bit later I was still bummed to see that like Marissa essentially got like bullied in the comments off of the internet for a while However, comma, I think this may be a classic uh, Don't dish it out if you can't take it kind of situation because revisiting some of the TikToks from my previous video um, Is this you? I'm not done ranting yet because people are dumb. So after biking all the way to Canadian Tire to get a new seat for my bike because it's broken. They won't allow me in the store because I have a backpack and they want me to leave my backpack and my belongings at the front. How am I supposed to buy stuff if I don't have my purse on me? Like, what are these dumb fucking rules? Do people not realize that a lot of women do not wear purses anymore? Especially when you're riding a bicycle. I can't wear a purse when I'm riding a bike. That's why I have a backpack because it fits everything that I need. Like, am I supposed to go in the store and hold everything that's not in my backpack? I actually might do that. Just take everything out of my backpack and walk in with my backpack empty. They can have that and I'll just hold all my items and be an asshole? Probably. Why do people have these fucking dumb rules? What is so bad about fucking having a backpack? What is so bad about a woman having a backpack as a purse? Jesus fucking Christ almighty. I fucking hate getting up out of bed to go on my daily walk to Tim Hortons to get food. And I make it in time, plenty of time before they close, yet they're not fucking serving food anymore. Do you understand how fucking frustrating that is? As a depressed person who doesn't want to fucking make food, I had more energy to get up, to go outside, to go for a fucking walk, to get food because I couldn't make any. And then the Tim Hortons that I go to literally is not selling food. You bet I said fuck you to the guy and left. I 
king hate this pandemic, and I king hate people. Holy shit! Fuck you, Trudeau. You dog. Fuck everybody! I know those videos are old and in in that in one of Marissa's more recent posts um, she asked not to be judged based on her past content um, so let's look at some of her more recent posts someone who's been fat guess what I don't give a fuck I do not care about you or your life sorry not sorry your experience does not warrant harassing me with unwanted health advice and your opinion on my body goodbye Hi, not to be rude, but I don't give a fuck. I don't care what you've struggled with. I don't care because you're giving me this unwanted health advice that I've said no to under the guise of fat phobia. So no offense, but I don't give a fuck what you've gone through. And for people just listening to the video, uh, for context in the second uh, video that I just showed you, Marissa was replying to someone talking about how they have been how they've struggled with EDs their whole life um, and have been both overweight and underweight uh, and how they know that like how both of those things can negatively affect the body. So, but before we get into the rest of today's video, I want to thank today's video sponsor, Balesa. Now, Balesa is a long-term friend of the channel and they have been my go-to for sexual wellness products and adult entertainment when the mood arises for a very long time. Balesa is a bi women company for all things sexuality. Think like toys, porn, erotica, sex ed, all of that kind of stuff. Balesa's mission is to empower everyone to explore, embrace, and celebrate their sexuality. So the folks at Balesa were kind enough to send me over some goodies that I want to show you today and the first one is the demi wand. Uh, I think this is a great option for people who may not be as familiar with toys who have never used one before. Um, I think it's very unintimidating um, and it is for external use and has eight speeds which none of those are patterns if you know you know uh, and just like all of their other toys it comes in like this very cute little case here um, that also holds a charge. These remind me of Polly Pockets and I will die on that hill. <laughs> The next one is the Air Vibe. And now I tell people about this one quite often. Um, and it is for people who like both internal and external stimulation. And I like it because both can be used. There's cat hair on this. Uh, I like it because it it's adjustable as well to like fit your anatomy, uh, which I think is super important when it comes to toys like this. This little lady features five vib vibration intensities on the internal side and five suction intensities on the external side. And again, cute little carrying case, very discreet. Um, and like I said, they do hold a charge. So uh, it helps keep your toys charged for longer. Why am I struggling to get this back in? Little Polly Pocket. <laughs> And the last one that I want to show you is the thrust. So I'll take it out of here. This one I was super excited to get. This one is again for people who like internal and external stimulation. I had been wanting to try it and I was very excited that they gave one to me. It has 10 vibration modes and five thrusting and rotating modes. All I can say is that it did not disappoint. So yep. <laughs> I should also mention that all of these are made with body safe, non-porous, silky smooth silicone, and all are fully waterproof, which means that they're submersible in water, um, which is great for both like play and for cleaning. Also all rechargeable, so there's no battery drama that will be had. So just like every time before, Balesa and I are literally sending out free vibrators and gift cards to everyone who signs up to enter my giveaway down below. Um, I've entered these previously with other creators and got a $50 gift card and everybody who enters with me, like I've been told that they've gotten $50, $35 gift cards, like they've gotten $50 gift card, like the, it's generous, okay? <laughs> so definitely go check out the link in my description box down below and please let me know what you got in the comments because I'm nosy and I want to know uh, and I am still so excited to be working with Blessa again um, and to be able to introduce you all to them if you've never heard of them I think sexual wellness is a really important topic especially for uh, women to be more open about because it is just a fact of life <laughs> 
So thank you so much to Balesa for sponsoring this video. And thank you so much to you guys for continuing to interact with my content so that brands like Balesa want to keep working with me. Okay, now let's get back into it. Playing aside, it seems like Marissa has now taken the opportunity to focus her content on primarily like two things. Um, one is doing the tube girl trend, uh, with captions over the video talking about how you shouldn't give unwanted health advice to people talking about how she's not promoting obesity and or talking about how hot she is, which like, I love a self-confident queen, so get after it with that if you want to. But the second thing she seems to have centered her content around is talking about how all the comments on her videos are that are giving her like weight loss or diet advice or like talking about her weight are all harassment and bullying because she has said over and over and over again on her platform that she doesn't want it. And therefore she hasn't given her consent to receiving such advice. Hi everyone, so this is just a friendly reminder that if I say that I do not want your opinion on my body, and if I say that I do not want your unsolicited and unwanted health advice about me and my body, and you then, then you do it, that's fucking harassment because I have said no and I have not consented to it. Anything after that is harassment and bullying. So instead of bothering me and wasting your fucking time out of your valuable fucking life, just leave me the hell alone. My body is none of your fucking concern. So fuck off. And then we'll both be happy. And then you won't be harassing me. Hello. So this is like a friendly reminder that my existence is not consent for you giving me advice or health advice. My existence, me walking by, you seeing me, that's not consent, okay? At all. Just like when I went to Fan Expo two weekends ago and I had to meet some people. Anyway, that's another story. Um, they had a sign that says cosplay is not consent, which is totally right. That's why you have to ask the fucking person, hey, I like your cosplay, can we take a photo? Yeah, sure, no problem. See, that's consent. Fucking seeing a fat person existing? That's not consent for harassing us and bullying us and giving us unwanted health advice, okay? So instead of trying to police other people and police other bodies um, to feed your fucking ego, just stop it. Worry about yourself, okay? Thanks. Everyone, just a reminder that just because I'm fat and I exist on the internet doesn't mean that you can give me unwanted health advice that I have for the last four years have said no to, okay? Fat people's existence is not consent for unwanted health advice. She throws around the phrases consent, harassment, and bullying a lot in her new content. And her use of the word consent flagged something for me because I remembered talking about this in my first video on her as well. And I wanted to revisit that uh, thought process here. So last time we looked at this video. I'm leaving at 4 p.m. and I don't care what anyone says. If you had a business that you were passionate about, then you would know what it takes to run a business, but you don't. And I made the point, and I'd like to make it again, that I think the context Marissa is using, the, the idea of consent in here, could really blur the line of like what consent actually means. Because unfortunately the idea of the ideas of consent, harassment, and bullying are still very blurry for some people. It comes to things especially like sexual acts, rem remarks, etc, etc. And while I do actually think the concept of how much consent content creators are giving their audiences to comment on certain things is actually like kind of an interesting thing to think about now. Um, I don't think we can lose sight of the big kind of consent, which is the kind surrounding sexual anything. In my previous video, I did take more of an issue with her talking about it in the way that she did um, because she was also talking a lot about like sex and dating and that kind of stuff too. And it felt like very dangerous to mix the two together. But still now, even though she's like branched off of talking from like about sex and dating and that kind of stuff, um, she still seems to think that just because she has stated in videos before um, that if you comment uh, about her weight 
or give her advice or even talk about your own personal experiences with your weight and stuff like that, um, you are harassing her and violating her all because she didn't ask. Now, do I personally think these comments are like necessary uh, based on the kind of, kind of content she makes? Absolutely not, because I think it's very clear that like her stance is not going to be changed and her mind's not going to be changed. But I also think it's kind of silly of her to assume that these randos who are commenting on one video have also gone back and scrolled through her entire library and have seen that she doesn't want these kinds of comments because she doesn't say it in every video. And not to mention also just revisiting my past video again, I would venture to say that her saying that she doesn't want these comments in her comment section is like kind of her setting a boundary of sorts, right? So with that in mind, I want to throw it back to this gem that we talked about in my last video. As the strong independent woman that I am, who knows my worth, knows how I should and deserve to be treated, and how I don't take shit from anyone, this results in uh, me having a very hard time dating. Mind you, I love standing up for myself. I love setting boundaries because half the time people don't like them. And a part of me enjoys that because it means I'm doing something right. But it's still frustrating nonetheless. So here's the story. Mash with this guy on Bumble. Talked for about two weeks, week and a half maybe. On Wednesday, we made plans to hang out for Sunday, which was yesterday. We were talking the night before. We confirmed we'd hang out in the evening. We talked the morning of. Let's preface that he wanted to hang out with me. I was fine with that. But because he asked me to hang out, that means that he needs to initiate the, the day of type of thing, you know? And he didn't. It was like 2.30 and he still did not say anything about hanging out that evening. Now, with that said, that means that I'm not gonna sit around all day waiting for a guy to say, hey. So I did other shit. I was sanding some of my jewelry that I'm making right now, and I was watching some TV with my mom. So when he asked me, what's up? I said, oh, I'm sanding some jewelry and uh, watching TV. He's like, oh, cool. I was like, how about you? He's like, not much. I'm like, okay, cool. So then it's like seven, eight-ish, and I send him this lovely message of me setting my boundaries, not being rude at all, but letting him know uh, that the way he was treating the whole situation I did not approve of. So I said, I thought we were hanging out today, lol. So he didn't answer that, so I said this. I'm not one to wait around all day for a guy, so I'm no longer available to hang out tonight as you never clarified or confirmed anything yet. And now here's where I state my boundary. If there's a next time, I'm going to need things to be a little bit more concrete. Example, a guaranteed time, not just a general time frame because my time is valuable and I don't appreciate it being wasted. Because essentially you did waste my time. I'm not mad, just stating my boundaries, so if you can respect them, then cool, and if not, then oh well for you. So I sent that last night. I wake up, he read it, but didn't say anything. So I type, nothing? Not even two minutes later, he deletes me, Oh, Poor little boy child who doesn't know how to handle an independent woman who knows her worth. <gasps> and because I'm a petty motherfucker, I message this on Bumble. I don't get it. You wanted to hang out with me. We chatted well and we had plans. We didn't end up hanging out because you didn't initiate the plans that we had had. So I set a boundary because I know my worth and then you blocked me? Make it make sense. Make it make sense, buddy, but seriously, make it make sense. And he has since unmatched me. Ladies, know your worth. Stand up for yourself. It's okay. I promise. And again, this is an older video. But I think it's important when it comes to her conversation regarding consent and harassment. I'll be the first to say that when I was dating, I also did some pretty dumb stuff and like didn't always know how to talk to people. <laughs> um, but I always tried to be as aware of the boundaries that were being set with me as I could, right? And I obviously don't condone ghosting, which like, that's what this guy did, unless you are starting to feel uncomfortable. Because if you haven't met a person, I am of the belief that if they start to make you comfortable, you are well within your rights to just dip out of there, right? I had to do that many times. <laughs> she was like nagging him after she after he had set a very clear boundary uh, with telling her that he wasn't interested anymore by unmatching. Um, and so to me, 
I think this could also be seen as harassment. And again, I know that this is an older video, but I still wanted to include it because I just felt like it was important. So yeah. So when I was scrolling Marissa's new content, I also came across this video. You know what still fucking boggles my mind up in here? When I like advocate for fat people and you know, we should be able to exist online without getting harassed and then people's responses. You posted a public video, what the fuck did you expect? I don't know, I expected to exist online without getting harassed, without experiencing fat phobia. I, I assumed and I expected people to be educated and to treat others like actual human beings with kindness and to not perpetuate discrimination and fat phobia and racism because yes, fat phobia is rooted in racism. And if you're new to this concept, then go learn about it. So yeah, what did you expect when you posted a uh, thing online? I expected to exist in peace because every fucking person deserves that. Every human being deserves that, including fat people, even if you don't think that we're people because of our body size and rant for the moment. Also, do you like my dress? And if you know me, you know I'm not like super into like black and white thinking. I think that there is a lot of nuance that gets lost, especially on the internet. Um, but I couldn't help but think that like some people just maybe aren't meant to be content creators in the public on the internet. And I'm not saying that to be harsh because like sometimes I wonder <laughs> if I'm cut out for that. It's pretty evident that Marissa's attitude towards her platform hasn't changed much. And honestly, it looks like the comments that she's getting uh, are causing her quite a bit of distress um, because all she does is reply to these what she deems as hate comments or any comments regarding weight at all with her main rebuttal to these comments that being i didn't ask and i don't ask a lot for a lot of the comments that i get on my videos um but i recognize that as soon as i post something to the internet that it's now on a public platform and I'm opening myself up to public opinion and people can just straight up be assholes sometimes. <laughs> I think if Marissa really wants to keep making TikToks um, without giving herself an aneurysm, uh, that she needs to manage her expectations a little bit. And I know that sounds harsh and I'm not intending to diminish her feelings because I totally understand the the mental turmoil that certain comments can cause. But I think as soon as you put something on a TikTok profile with 50,000 followers, you're opening yourself up to a bit of critique, especially on TikTok. I have had a TikTok, I had a TikTok go like, not viral, but like it did very well. Like it got like hundreds of thousands of views and comments and stuff. People can be vile on TikTok. Like I was just like, damn, this is scary. <laughs> Like it was scarier than having a video get hundreds of thousands of views on here. I was like, what the hell? Anyways, yeah, I think uh, there is a certain level of ownership that content creators have to take um, in knowing that they are now putting themselves out on a public platform and are opening themselves up to public opinion. Content creators of all sizes also, like physical sizes, get comments on their appearance all the time. And like, it is just an unfortunate part of the job. And like, you just have to learn to filter it out. And I know that's shitty because like, we shouldn't just be like, well, people are shitty sometimes. But like, when you are putting yourself out on the internet, the largest stage there is, it's just part of it. And it's, and it's important to be able to be realistic about that. I think she either needs to like not be on the internet as a public figure or just come to realize that like people are gonna be dumb. And if she really wants to just share her life and her life living as a fat person who doesn't let their weight like get in the way of them doing things, I think she needs to just ignore them and shed extra love on the people who support her. And she also really needs to stop just poking the bears that are these content, that are these comments, because if she's responding to someone who is a troll, that's only going to instigate them further. Like, and it's just going to keep the cycle going. I honestly don't know what her content is like on her TikTok channel or account or whatever. Um, I don't know if it is to call out maybe the harassment that she feels fat people disproportionately get on the internet um, or what, but I think her making the same video over and over and over and over again, being like, I didn't ask for this, stop doing this 
blah 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 and then other and also just like being an asshole to people for seemingly no apparent reason because the comments that she is just like a dickhead to honestly in my opinion like i don't feel like it's warranted do i think unsolicited advice and opinions on anybody's body is necessary or whatever no but like i also think some people may have good intentions i'm not really sure people are always going to give you harsh opinions on the internet just because you make it abundantly clear that like you don't want certain comments people are going to make them anyway in my videos on people who may be trans or in the lgbtqia plus community including myself i say that i do not tolerate homophobic or transphobic comments but for my own mental health, I can only monitor that for so long, you know? And I try my best to be like, use preferred pronouns, don't be a dick, like blah, blah, blah. This is a very queer inclusive place. Like I make it as clear as I possibly can, but I ultimately know that some of those comments are very much out of my control um, and I can block certain words and whatever, but like people are still gonna be people and like, I monitor those videos a little more closely for like 24 to 48 hours after posting them. And then after that, like I would go nuts if I kept monitoring them after that. And also I work a full-time job after this. I don't have time. <laughs> so yeah, I think content creators can set these boundaries, can make it clear what kind of interactions they do and do not want on their channel. But like we cannot expect everybody to abide by that. And I think it's coming from a place of entitlement, maybe, um, to think that everybody is just going to listen because that's just not how the world works. <laughs> uh, anyways, this was just, I just wanted to revisit Marissa and shine some light on her new content, um, comparing it to some of her older content, because I think it goes without saying that she is still up to her normal antics, you know? Again, it's, I feel like it is very much a, if you can't take it, then don't dish it out kind of situation, <laughs> uh, which I think also when you are leading, uh, when you are lending commentary or whatever this is on the internet, uh, you can't go into it with that attitude because like if you are being so brash as to put your your opinion on the internet you gotta expect that you're gonna get opinions back and yeah I let me know what you think in the comments I think the idea of consent with content creators and stuff like that is actually kind of an interesting topic to think about um but yeah without repeating myself too much, I just do think that like there is a certain ownership that like we have to take as content creators that like people are gonna give us their opinions whether we say we want them or not. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments and thank you so much to Belessa for sponsoring today's video uh, and thank you guys the most because I just cannot express to you how much this audience means to me and to have this opportunity means to me. Yeah, remember to be kind to yourself, be kind to others, drink your water, take your meds, and I will see you in the next one. Okay, bye.